and uh, you will be studying something about uh, file models, fault tolerance and replication. So file system is a very important part of any computer based system. So it is a key component of uh, any computer based system, whether it is a distributed system or whether it is a uniprocess system. So file system is a key component of a distributed system. So you have a single process system which we are using like your desktop, your laptop, etc. So what does the file system do in a single process system? It is basically used to store your data. You can store a program, you can store the data and use it whenever it has been needed for you. So similarly, the same idea is also been implemented with the distributed file system. You can have a file system and which is used to store data, which is used to store the program and make it available to the clients whenever it has been needed. So there are basically two concepts of distributed file system. One is called file service and the other one is called file server. So file service is nothing but it is an interface which is being given to the clients. The clients will know what are all the operation your file system will support. So that is called a file service. So file service is an interface to the client. It will tell what are all the available features or what are all is being available in that particular file system. File server is nothing but it is a process which will run on any machine. So you can have either one file servers or multiple file servers depending upon your requirement. So you can have multiple file servers. One is to store your um, record of student. I can have a file server which will store the record of uh, the administration. We can have a file server which will store all the audio data like that right so file servers can be one or multiple and it is nothing but it is similar to a server it will run on a particular machine and uh, it is used to store the data so two main concepts of a distributed file system is uh, file service and file server file server is the normal service which we use to store the data and you can retrieve the data as and when you require file service is nothing but an interface to the clients so a system may have either one file server or multiple file servers and as per uh, the distributed system a transparency policy always the user should not know how many servers are there and where the server is being located and what is the function of each server. So we are studying about uh, cloud also. So in cloud also we have the concept of transparency. You don't know where your data is being stored and which file server your data is being stored the location of a particular server and the functionality of a particular server. The same applies to distributed system also. So whenever the client requests for any file service, like a reading of a file or uh, getting a file and writing something into a file, the required work will be done by the system, right? You have a particular uh, a coordinator which will do, take the file and it will do the appropriate work and again save the results back to the server. So you can have one or multiple file servers and uh, according to the transparency rule, we shouldn't know how many servers are there and what is the location of each server. So whenever a procedure is to be done, whenever you want to execute a particular program or whenever you want to read or do a write operation, the required work will be performed and the results will be returned back to the client. So this is about distributed file system design, a very, very important uh, topic. The distributed file system has two distinct components. So one is a file service component, other one is called a directory service component. So we'll be studying about these two components and the models which have been, file models which have been implemented in each and every model. So file service model, so this is concerned with all the operations on individual file. So what all we can do on a particular file, you can read a file, you can write a file, you can uh, append some data into the file, you can modify the file, etc. So the file, true file service, what all it does is it will deal with all the operations on the individual file, such as reading a file, writing a file, appending data into a file, etc. And directory service, it is with creating and managing the directory. So it will deal with all the operations with the directory. So you can create a directory, you can manage a directory, you can add the files to the existing directories. You can remove the files from the directories, etc. So directory service will uh, do all the 
functionality is concerned with the directories like creating a directory, putting files into the directories and uh, removing the files from the directories, etc. So we'll see the first one, which is called uh, true file service. So, uh, so file is usually it is a sequence of bytes. So file can be anything. It can be a sequence of bytes. And each and every file, whichever we have, will have some information related to the file. So that you call it to be file attribute. So every file will have some attributes or some information which is relevant to a particular file. So usually we have who is the owner of a file, what is the size of the file, the date of creation of the file, the access permissions for the file, etc. So uh, apart from the attributes, it will also tell you what are all the procedures which can be done on a file. Whether you can read a file, whether you can write a file, or you can change the access permission of the file, etc. So this file service interface will tell you about a file, the information of a file, and what are all the basic procedures or the operations which you can do it on the file. So whenever you create a particular file, the important property is that we have to mention whether you can modify the file or not. Usually most systems doesn't support file modification. So if suppose you do any write operations to the file, it will be created as a new file and you'll uh, put it onto the system. So with files, you also have to consider an important aspect whether you can modify the files after it has been created. So the basic operations which have been supported with files is creating a file and reading the data from a particular file. So there are two types uh, when you create a file. It is called immutable files or mutable files. So immutable file is nothing but whenever you create a file, the file cannot be changed. You can use it only for a read operation. That is called an immutable file. Right. So once you create a file, you can't change the contents of the file. It can be used only for uh, reading. So this is called as an immutable file. So the basic idea of using immutable file is that uh, here all the problems associated with caching will be avoided. So if suppose you cache a file and if you do the modifications locally, it also has to be done on the file server. So that is a problem with caching. So when you make the files to be immutable, then all the problems which you have with caching will not be there. So many important files are uh, said to be immutable, wherein no one is allowed to change the file, you can only use the content, you can only read it. And uh, protection in a distributed system. So as you do with uniprocess systems, you can also have uh, protection of the files using capabilities and access control lists. So capabilities is nothing but it is a type of uh, ticket and when a particular client has a ticket, he can access a particular file. So here also reading only is allowed and writing is not allowed. So whenever you want to access a file, you should have a ticket called capability and with that you can access a file. So similarly, you can have access control list and access control list will have a list of users who can access the file and how he can use that particular file. So that is with the access control list so every file will have an acl and this acl will have a list of uh, users who will access the file and how he can access the file so uh, this is about the file service models so basically we have two models of file service one is called the upload download model and the other one is the remote access model a very important topic you noted down so file service model, we have two different types of file service model. One is called the upload download model, a simple model. And the other one is called a remote access model. So in upload download model, it is uh, for uh, you have a client and a server. And whenever the client wants a particular file, it will take a file from the server. It will use it. And if suppose you have any modifications of the file, the whole file has to be returned back to the server. So the basic advantage here is simplicity because whenever I want a file, means I can just take the file directly from the server, I can have a local copy of it. And if suppose I won't have any modifications, you again take it as a new file and you do a write operation into the server. So the basic 
advantage is simplicity but the thing is that even when you want to do a small modification also you have to move the entire file to the client and after the change is being done the change may be a minimum change with only modifications of uh, a very minimum portion so after the change is being done the whole file has to be copied to the server as a new file so this is uh, the disadvantage of this so uh, two operations will be supported with the upload download file so one is a read operation other one is a write operation so you can move the file from the server to the client and the client can access the particular file which has been requested if suppose you have modified the file you return it back to the server as a new file okay so you return it back to the server as a new file so upload is uh, writing to the server and download is uh, reading the data or file from the server so upload download model as discussed it has two major operation one is the read operation other one is the write operation and um, for a read operation you take the entire file the full file from the server and give it to the client and uh, whenever you want to do a write operation the client will do the write operation and then it will move the entire file to the server so here you move the files in either direction either from the client to the server or from the server to the client as a full file okay so uh, the, the basic model of this upload and download is that you move the full or the whole file from the client to the server and from the server to the client so you can also store it in uh, the copy of the file in the client as a local storage and you can use it whenever needed so since if you do any write operation you take it as a new file and you move that file to the server back so the main advantage is that it is simple so any modified or newly created files are returned back uh, to the server whenever the client has done the work so the only disadvantage is that suppose you need only a fraction of the file also then you need uh, then also you need to move the entire file so this is a wastage of network capacity right so even if you need only a fraction of the file needed you move the entire file and uh, this is not as much useful as would be required so this file transfer the one more uh, issue is that the client should have more storage capacity such that it will store the full file whenever it requires it so the next part is the remote access model so remote access model overcomes the disadvantage of the upload download model wherein you can move parts of the file so here you move the entire file in the remote access model you can move parts of the file from the server to the client so uh, it also supports more number of operations so in the upload download model it supports only two operations read and write but uh, remote access model supports a uh, number of operations which is you can open a file you can close a file you can read write parts of the file it is not the whole file if, if you want a particular part of the file you can just take it read and write the file and uh, you can also move the files within and uh, if you want you can also change the attributes so remote access model supports a lot more operations compared to the upload download model so uh, for one uh, the difference is that the file system will run on the server in the remote access model whereas here the upload download model the file system runs on the client okay so the file system runs on the client in the upload download model and in the remote access model the file system runs on the server so client will get the request and the file can be moved in parts whichever part you require we can move it and we can so the file system runs on the servers in a remote file system uh, the more advantage is that the client doesn't require more space for storing the whole file and um, even if you need only a small piece of the file you can just take only that part of the file and you can use it so that is one more uh, great advantage of the remote access model there is no need to take the entire file pull the entire file from the server to the client instead only the part whichever you need you can so that's up with uh, the remote access model and uh, we'll wind up for the class for today